So Dakota, what has it been like now getting ready for this big fight and you're not going to Hollywood, Florida, you're going to Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> so you gotta travel. So there's the thing. Not like Josh, not like the other No, but yeah. so what is it like just getting to semifinals and gonna be part of that big event there? Yeah, um I'm really excited. I'm excited to go to Nashville for a start. Um it's like the one state that everyone's like, you're gonna love it. You know, when I went to like Connecticut, everyone was like, mm, it's a bit quiet. <laughs> And the other one as well, but um, yeah, I'm super excited. Obviously, it's nice to be in the semi-finals. Um, I'm ready to go. I just feel like I just haven't like stopped all year. I'm just like constantly just ready to keep going. Yeah. How did you like the season format and being a part of all that? Yeah, the season's been really good. I've kind of dealt really well with it just because I'm used to fighting quite regularly anyway. Um, and I've got a team, like American Top Team, that's like got the experience of so many fighters doing this tournament that um, you know, they know when to push hard, when to pull back a little bit. So I've been able to kind of manage training, make sure I'm not burning out too much. And yeah, they, I feel really strong and probably the fittest I've felt throughout the whole season. So um, I'm, I'm ready to go, yeah. How have you been training? Who's been training with you? And who's going with you to Nashville for that one? Yeah, so to Nashville is my normal corner, Conan. I always have him there. He's my head coach. And then my brother as well, Cody, who comes over like two weeks before. Um, I go to fight week and we finish off camp together and then he obviously travels with me but um, that's who we'll be going and yeah camp's gone really well. We've been training with everyone in the gym, you know, I've done a lot, I've got great partners that you know um, drill really well with me, I've been training with people like Asia, uh, Cortez, Emily Martins, um, her sister used to fight PFL, Evelyn so um, yeah, that I've had, I, I spar some of the guys as well. I've been working a lot with a lad called Leo, which, you know, he's, he's given me great work, great sparring rounds, and it's just been a really good camp again, yeah. What is it like being here at American Top Team and having that luxury to be able to do that? Yeah, um, I just love life here at American Top Team. Like, honestly, this is like the happiest I've ever been in my life, I think, being over here in Florida. And I think especially this year, because I actually made the move and got my own apartment and, um, I feel like I'm at home now, you know, I felt so unsettled, I think, for many years, I think, inside the sport, outside the sport, you know, I wasn't really sure where my life was going at times, um, you know, when I was, before I signed with PFL, I, didn't, I was kind of fighting on different promotions, didn't kind of have a direction, I just knew where I wanted to be, but I feel like since making the move here to American Top Team and signing with PFL, I've kind of had a really good plan set out for the last two years, and um, I've absolutely love life yeah is it your goal to also be the face of pfl what are your thoughts of that because your journey so far has been a, a short journey but you've done so well so soon yeah and um, my goal is never to be the face of anything like i don't enjoy like having all this attention and like so you know it's really good obviously to grow my brand and things like that but it's not something that i um i started out to do you know to be like the face of everything it's just kind of come with the sport um, I think for me it's just I want to keep winning, keep performing, um, like I always feel super lucky if I get on the main card or like co-main event again, so um, for me like I'm really proud of things like that, but um, yeah if I end up the face of PFL I'll represent very well, you know me, um, but it's never like a goal of mine to be like I want to be the face of this or anything. So. And then last thing for me, are you a South Floridian now? Does I that mean you are a true <laughs> South Floridian? Have you got all the lingo down? Have you got any of the places to go? Come on. I wouldn't say like my, um, my accent or anything like that is catching on just yet. <laughs> Everyone in the gym is always laughing at like some of the words I come out with that are very English. But um, I, I kind of like to keep it that way because it keeps everyone entertained. So we're always bantering about it. <laughs> awesome. Dakota, you were saying a couple times we have talked uh, yeah. All, all the other stuff outside of the fighting, sometimes you say you don't like air quotes out there, but like everything you do, you do it phenomenal wise. If it's on air in Hawaii, all the stuff yeah. you do with us, your vlogs, all the YouTube stuff, you do it so greatly. Like, are you getting the knack of it? Are you starting to like feel it a little bit more and more that you do do it? Yeah, um, I do I do enjoy it when I do it. And it is something like, you know, interviewing and things like that is what I want to go into and like, maybe even commentating and things like that. But I don't like to speak about myself okay. <laughs> is the main thing. Um, I feel like people just constantly, it's my face everywhere. And I'm not the type of person that's like, just wants attention on me, you know? I just kind of um, want people to see my skills in the cage and then, you know, look at everyone else's as well. You know, I don't want my face plastered everywhere. It just so happens that that's kind of what my performance kind of brings. But um, yeah, definitely I'm getting used to it. 
I definitely don't want to like get too caught up in the fact that everyone's speaking about me and you know it gets in my head or anything so uh, that's just the main thing but I do enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay uh, of course your fight most important of the next fight is the most important yeah. but on the other side of that tournament is yeah. Santos and Carmouche. Mm -hmm. Santos maybe a bit of a bigger name coming from the UFC yeah. you know fought Valentina very very tough a lot of people had her win in that fight but on the other side of that is this Carmouche a little bit of a pioneer kind of a historian fight. Do you do you care at all which of that do you think one of it is, could be a bigger fight for you? Would you rather maybe try to fight Carmouche maybe before she maybe doesn't do the tournament next year or so on? Do you care at all who wins that fight? Um, not really because I do want to face both of them at some point. I think they're both really good fights for me. Um, both very high level women in the sport. Like you said, I think some people will um, give more attention to Talia because she's come from UFC and people recognize that more. And Liz, obviously, for me, she's got she's been around for so long. She's beat so many amazing fighters. Um, she's got Bellator belt, obviously, so that could be potentially something that I would want to go for afterwards. But yeah, I'm like I'm excited to watch that fight. I keep saying that, you know, it would be some it would be a fight that I would tune into if I wasn't on the card, you know. So um, I'm excited to see who I end up who I end up against first, and then uh, hopefully we'll get the other person maybe next year. There we go. And have you already scoped out the national spots? Have you guys already scoped out a good dinner spot for weigh-in night or victory, maybe celebration night of that sorts for national? I haven't actually like picked out anywhere because most people are sitting that like everywhere is going to be good, so you'll know, you won't struggle. So uh, I think I'll just find something when I get there. When I'm like kind of twiddling my thumbs in the hotel room, I'll find somewhere. But um, I've been told to like go to a lot of the live bars and things like that. So I just need to get my boots and my hat because I've still not done that yet. There you go. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Dakota, you were talking about how much you love being active, you love the, the tournament schedule, and that you're used to fighting this often. Um, for a lot of fighters, four fights a year is unheard of. Do you feel like you have to be a special kind of fighter to keep that schedule? And how do you juggle recovery injuries when you know you're going to have so many fights in a row? Yeah, um, I don't know whether you have to be a special type of fighter. Maybe you do. Um, yeah, I think mentally you have to be really tough and it has to be what you're living for. Like I literally live in the gym all year round. There isn't like a camp phase for me where it's like eight weeks I'll get in the gym now, you know. I'm here anyway all the time. I think that helps a lot. Um, and yeah, for me I have really enjoyed, you know, staying, staying active. I think for me as well, like I don't like to decrease my fitness level or, you know, come out the gym and like see a bit of a change. I want to like keep improving all the time. So I think that's what keeps me motivated as well. So Dakota, how did you get to American Top Team? Tell me how that story came about. So originally 2022, um, I signed with PFL and I was going to make my debut on the London card um, that they were doing. Taylor Harrison actually fought on that card as well, um, I think. And a couple of weeks before that, I wanted to come to America for so long, but I thought, right, I'm just going to do it. So I booked four weeks and I had different gyms in mind in different states. I just wanted to see my level, obviously signing with a big promotion like PFL, I wanted to make sure I was going to be ready. There isn't many girls in the UK for me to train for, so it's hard sometimes for me to gauge like with the guys how well I'm actually doing because strength-wise they might not be going 100% and you know you never know 100% how, you, how you're how you doing against them. So. I decided to just book it. I was actually going through like quite a weird stage in life, like just completely lost. I was crying all the time, bad relationship, things like that. So it was like the perfect time for me to go. So I started off um, in California. I went to CSA gym, amazing gym there. Um, but I didn't really settle there. I then went to Vegas for a week straight after. I don't really like Vegas. It probably didn't help the fact that I stayed in a hotel on like where obviously it was quite busy and stuff and that's not really my scene. Um, so that was another week and then the last two weeks I was gonna come here to American Top Team, which I did. And literally after like two days, Conan said to me like, um, I want you to like, you know, finish your camp here for the London fight. Think about it, but not for too long, he said to me. <laughs> and I remember those words because honestly, if he hadn't have said that to me, I probably would have been thinking about it for the rest of my time, like the two weeks. But I just said to my mum straight away, like, I want to stay, and that was it. I just fell in love with Florida, the team here, obviously, my mum being my coach my whole career, um, it was important that I found a coach that I got a similar bond with and clicked with straight away, and I got that with Conan, so I felt really like I could trust him, you know, and um, I 
just absolutely loved it, honestly. And like, I never want to go home now. If it wasn't for my family, I wouldn't be in the UK, which is really bad to say. <laughs> and my mum will hate that. She always says like, this is your home. Like, this will always be your home. But honestly, I just absolutely love it here. And the playoffs, you t talk to me about your next fight coming up. Yeah, so I'm fighting Jenna Bishop, black belt, obviously in Jiu Jitsu. Um, just got a split, de split decision, um, lost to Talia Santos, I think it is. And um, yeah, I was impressed, you know, she did a lot better than a lot of people thought. So I'm excited. She was unbeaten before that loss. So I know that I've got a tough, tough test here and she's going to be a, everyone comes back strong after a loss. So, you know, she's going to be there right in front of me, ready to get a win back. So I'm expecting a tough fight, but honestly, I'm just going to keep going the way I have in this tournament. and. Um, yeah, wait till I get that new belt. <laughs> and when you do get the belt, what are you going to do with the money? Honestly, people keep asking me that about the money, but I'm not really like one of the people that looks like, oh, I want to spend it on this and this. I just, it's just for me, the security of like my family having, you know, that money there in case we ever needed it or just to give them a little bit of a better life. Um, but I, I think more about the fact that I need to buy a new like, unit in my mum's house for my belts because I got the PFL Europe one last year <laughs> and now I need somewhere to put this one so I'm going to get a new fancy unit because my mum's done her house up so it's got to look good. <laughs> great, great. And how do you foresee the fight going? Um, I mean, I'm going to say another stoppage, that's what I'm going for, for sure. Um, but I'll be ready for a three round more. It'll just be, you know, three, three five minute rounds to show my skills even more to everyone because they don't always get to watch for the longest. So, um, yeah. Expect just don't blink. That's what I always say. Don't blink. <laughs> don't blink. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, what do you? What would you say to the people who have like the comment on you being protected by the PFL and not fighting with this competition? Yeah. Um, I don't really comment honestly. Like he gets so many comments all the time. Like I was talking to my brother about this the other day. Um, people say like they want to see me get wrestled, but then probably when someone starts wrestling. They Wrestling, they don't say you're like a boring fight, you want her to strike. So, like, you'll never, I'll never be able to win with people like that. Um, I think an example my brother gave with Alex Pereira, you know, everyone wants to see him wrestle, but I'm sure everyone will want to see him knock someone out when he's when that happens, you know. So, um, for me, I don't look into it. And competition wise, I fight whoever's put in front of me, you know. Um, if I'd got Talia in the first round, I would have fought her. If I'd got Liz in the first round, I would have fought her. But, what people also have to remember is this is a business, this sport, and it gets more and more like that. You know, they want to make money, they want to put the good fights on, they want to be able to, you know, um, make the tournament exciting for the whole time. So that's another thing you have to keep in mind. Now, knowing that you might go into a three-round war in your next match, does that change your preparation? No, not at all. I prepare for a three-round war every fight. You know. I say that, but I also don't because that's not my style, you know. I'm not going to kind of get into a, a brawl with people. I don't think that's how I fight. So um, I would definitely, like, stay away from a brawl if, if I can, you know, because like, that's my style. But I'm always ready for that, you know. I feel like my sparring rounds are tough and I'm, um, I'm always prepared for things like that. You know, the girls that I'm wrestling with on the mat all the time here at ATT definitely give me, like, a crazy, crazy... Uh, wide round so I'm always prepared for it always. Okay. No problem.